Welcome to The Green Room, where we explore the environmental issues that impact our world. Today we'll be talking with Stephen Kolk, an insurance actuary who specializes in the economic impacts of climate change risk. Steve, welcome to the show. Hi, Barbara. It's a pleasure to be here. So you have a company which does consulting projects to quantify and prioritize climate risks. And you get presentations on this topic um, all over the world. I guess Indonesia last year, Vietnam last month. Uh, so thanks for fitting this into your schedule. Again, it's my pleasure. So briefly, what is an actuary? An actuary measures risk to properties, transportation, and people, and sets prices that are fair and neither excessive nor inadequate. Insurance prices, right? Insurance prices, yeah. yep. Okay. And uh, where does climate change stand among the other risks actuaries track? Is it In a couple of ways, it's number one. Oh, yeah? The World Economic Forum did a survey and found extreme weather events, hmm. number one, but then number two was mitigation and adaptation failures due to climate risk. When you talk to actuaries specifically, as recent as a couple of months ago, they surveyed and climate change is number one on their hmm. risk list wow. of emerging risk because it affects all the weather catastrophes we pay attention to. Hmm. Wow. What did they mean by uh, failures of adaptation? Or is it just that there's just so much that they have to do to try to fix things? It's such a complex risk that people are easy to slip into denial, oh. and that's the issue, oh. you know, a failure of mitigation for lack oh, of see. paying attention. Oh, I see. Okay, I got it. Mitigation is trying to prevent climate change. So, okay. Adaptation is cleaning up with the, the mess. Aftermath. Aft yeah. Okay. Uh, and what would be the impact of global warming on climate-related disasters like your usual floods and things that we've always had? It's a multiplier. It makes everything worse. Okay. In a lot of ways, hurricanes are bigger. Tornadoes are more mm -hmm. widespread. Wildfires are bigger. Droughts are longer. Mm -hmm. And these all are um, things that actuaries have to keep in mind. So, all right. Um, the consensus seems to be that uh, with any of those events, it's pretty much impossible to determine whether or not that would have occurred anyway without climate change. But I guess the trends that are, are those are more what you look at, right? Right, it's impossible to attribute any one event to climate change, but the size of the events, hmm. a whole science of attribution is making the determination of just how much, how much bigger events are hmm. as a clear effect of climate change. Hmm. So is there a trend related to the money being spent on these climate change related disasters? Yes, there is. Catastrophe costs are clearly getting bigger there have been 30 catastrophes in the last two years, billion dollar events. Mm. 2017 saw Hurricane Harvey with 125 billion on its own. That was the second largest. That same year was Hurricane Maria, another 90 million, and Hurricane Irma. Mm. That year alone had 306 billion dollars events, eclipsing wow. 204 billion in a dozen years ago with Hurricane Katrina. So in 12 years, they grew 50%. So that's the kind of things you guys try to predict and analyze and put a price on the insurance for, right? Right. Seems like it'd be pretty hard for the insurance industry to come out ahead when they're paying out such you know, frequent and large, you know, having to clean up after these things. Um, are they going to remain solvent? Are they going to keep being able to yeah, insure? Yeah, very true. It's hard for us to keep ahead these catastrophes are so big that we need to partner with the mm -hmm. government. So how are we uh, paying for all this cleanup? Uh, is it uh, taxpayer money or private? We're government? working to both get more private capital involved on the flooding side. That's long been the province of FEMA and the federal government. I've been involved on a couple of task forces that are working to privatize flood insurance. I had the distinct pleasure of filing a private insurance program as a chief actuary in a Florida insurance company 
and I'm now spreading that knowledge as a member of an industry task force, part of the American Academy of Actuaries. And just to be clear, what's FEMA stand for? FEMA is the Federal Emergency Management Administration. Okay. How much of uh, these disasters is uninsured? Like the risk, uh, how much of the risk is uninsured? If you look just at flood, there's probably over 80% uninsured, wow. up to 90% in places. If you look back through time, worldwide there was 80% of events was uninsured in the 80s and it's now looks better 66 percent is uninsured but in that 30-year period the uninsured disasters went from 400 billion to 1.2 trillion oh my gosh so it's tripled in 30 years so let's talk about some other Im economic impacts of climate change uh, you had some pretty interesting ones about vehicle delays and stuff I've never thought of. Yeah, you can go to the International Panel on Climate Change. They've done studies that not only say what's happened in recent times, but they project out of the future. And their base case scenario shows how much warming there will happen. And what they see is, starting in Texas and all around the southern part of the U.S., it will warm up more, people will sweat more, and so it'll just be harder to work, and that will slow down the economy. Oh. Outdoor work? Uh, Outdoor work. Uh -huh. We've got the infrastructure uh -huh. that needs to be fixed. Hmm. Those costs, the transportation industry is the backbone of the economy. All those things need to be fixed, hmm. and the costs are just like $400 billion a year a benefit, but the costs are like $200 billion just to keep the roads and bridges and hmm. tunnels healthy. So is that what they were talking about with vehicle delays maybe due to construction and, and you know, like the economy suffering because everybody's part of sitting it. in the car and That's traffic jams? That's a good jams? instinct. <laughs> but the know. other part is just nuisance flooding. Uh -huh. I've visited Virginia many times and seen for myself the naval yards, yeah. they bring on 35,000 civilians on and off the military base there, the naval station that mm -hmm. service, fight all the wars that the government and so on does. But they have nuisance flooding that is keeping people, slowing them from getting on and off the bases. A friend wow. of mine right here in Lake St. Clair has seen similar nuisance flooding. Rain comes and puddles up, more than puddles, you make a mini lake hmm. that takes a while to disperse. Mm -hmm. And so there's that really interferes unexpected with transportation delays yeah. of, I'll never guess what really is going to happen. So more and more of these stories are making the news. Yeah. Making it harder and harder for actuaries to <laughs> do their job <laughs> in terms of predicting. I came across something in a report by Risky Business that um, I want to read because I something another thing I'd never thought of they were saying that with all these changes in temperature like the heat we'll need the equivalent of 200 new power plants to deal with all this you know more air conditioning costing rate pairs up to 12 billion a year so it's like pervasive these economic impacts um, let's give people the uh, URL to risky business it's um do, do you remember riskybusiness.org okay and it's, it's a very rich source. Are there other resources you would recommend? Yes, there are. There's a couple. The National Climate Assessment, when you want to talk economics, specifically chapters 10, 11, and 12 speak to the effects on agriculture and the effects on transportation. Hmm. Agriculture is very unique for Michigan because we have the second most diverse hmm. crop yield. Only the California, and we're second to California, probably only because California is so much bigger. The Great Lakes make us a rich farmland, and that is being affected. Hmm. So there's also the, the UN 
okay. has just come out with its annual economic forecast of the world. Last year was the 25th anniversary of the UN, so they did a special job mm -hmm. this year on the heels of that is another good resource. Great. I really appreciate you coming today and filling us in on this really important topic. Thank you so much. Thank you for inviting me. It's been my pleasure. To watch this show online and past segments as well, please go to washina.org forward slash greenroom. Thanks for joining us here in the Green Room.